This is the culmination of uh, a story that's been running for quite some time, a simple idea that maybe you could store large amounts of energy in bags under the water, using the water around the bags to hold that energy in. And we've got two prototype bags here, which are small-scale versions of what you would do in reality, about one-tenth of the diameter that's a good sensible size, and we're going to fill them up with air, we have filled them up with air, and fill a tank around them with water. Uh, and after what you see today, we'll cycle them up and down to see how many cycles they can last for. We've got air in the bags, they're lightly pressurized. We are going to put a lot of water into this tank, 15 tons. We've not done this before, so we hope that it's all gonna stay on the inside of the tank. Um, the bags are gonna change shape a little bit. We're gonna see them turn into a shape that's a bit more like a natural air balloon uh, shape. Uh, they, they started a long time ago as just a wildest of ideas, and it was one of those things that you think, this is crazy. And then you start to do the calculations and it says, maybe not. Very large leaks would be bad, uh, and uh, th that could either be from the bags themselves or from the tank. Uh, a, a leak from the tank I'm not so upset about, I know how to fix that. A leak from the bag requires a big rethink. Now we turn on the taps. Oh. That doesn't look so fast, does it? We're going to be here for quite a few hours. Think about pumping up your bicycle tire. You have to work very hard to put the energy into the bicycle tire. And we never do this, but if you let the air back out of the bicycle tire, you could let it push the pump for you again, and you could take that work back out. So this is on a similar principle. These are huge bicycle tires, if you like, under the sea, where we're not just interested in putting the energy in, we have a way also to get it back out. And a really nice thing about this is you can get a high proportion of all the energy you put in back out again. Yeah, very good, yes. Yeah, it's worked well. Well, the visions. I was worried about the vision of it, but... See, with the bars on it, but it's, the looks, and yeah, but it's pretty good vision still, so... Oh, it's actually popping it out down below. Yeah, yeah. Popping it out. It's a bit of pressure in there, isn't it? Like say, so it's okay, so we're about seven feet of water in there. We could put another foot in, but the bags, as you see, are completely covered. We're seeing a few tiny little air leaks from the top of each of them, in fact, which is just uh, to do with us not having tightened up bolts as tight as, as they should have been. But basically, everything is working fine. We've got bags pressurized up now to 120 millibar. They're actually uh, rated up to 400 millibar, four-tenths of an atmospheric pressure. And everything is working fine. We've got two tons of water displaced from each bag here, two tons of lift on the eye hooks at the bottom. If those give way, there's going to be a great leap up in front of me, and I'm going to be knocked off here, but they won't. And uh, we have a first demonstration of two energy bags uh, storing energy, not very much, but uh, storing energy as they would 500 meters under seawater. So next step is we uh, look at a much larger prototype, a five meter prototype which is already being made. We're going to put that in seawater and we're going to cycle it um, on a location offshore and uh, see how well that survives in seawater. And in this laboratory, we're going to cycle these things at least 5,000 times. And, uh, fill empty, fill empty, the left and the right, and see that the fabric and the, the construction stands up to that. Watch this space. This is a really cheap way to store energy, and I challenge anybody else to claim even that they can produce a system that can store energy in the sorts of quantities that we need it in the UK at levels as cheap as 10,000 pounds per megawatt hour, which is what we're looking at here.